Welcome to Municipal Affairs, the show dedicated to delving deep into the matters that shape municipalities across Canada. Now, as we bid farewell to 2023, we're taking stock on the highs and lows and triumphs and trials that shaped our municipalities from coast to coast to coast. Today, we are honored to be sitting down with the president of Alberta Municipalities, Mayor Tyler Gandum. From navigating unprecedented circumstances to celebrating noteworthy achievements, our municipalities have been at the forefront of change over the last 12 months. So stay with us as this is Municipal Affairs Year in Review. Tyler, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by recapping the last 12 months in the province of Alberta. And I want to ask you, as president of Alberta Municipalities, What is the state of municipalities in the province of Alberta at the end of 2023? I think uh, what we're seeing now in terms of tax increases um, as we get through uh, budget deliberations, understanding the the deficits that we're facing, um, not getting as much funding from the provincial government, and just the cost of doing business now. uh, We're struggling like anybody else. Inflation definitely doesn't just hit you at home. It's hitting us in terms of municipalities and operating municipal budgets. Um, But we are coming together in terms of building relationships and making sure that uh, we're sharing best practices and just encouraging one another. Uh, We are seeing mental health, addictions, homelessness like never before and um, reaching out to one another, trying to offer the supports finding out what each of the communities is doing um, to help mitigate some of the issues that we're seeing. Um, we're collectively, we're working together well. Um, independently, I think we're all struggling a little bit in, in managing those problems. So one of the big things that Alberta municipalities has been calling for in 2023 is a new fiscal framework, not only Alberta municipalities, but along with your counterpart FCM and other municipal organizations across Canada. Uh, You you became president halfway through the year, but I want to start sort of with the provincial election. You had a successful campaign asking all the parties to sort of Uh, give you more money for infrastructure at the end of 2023. I'm assuming you're still waiting for that money, but are you optimistic heading into the new year that you're going to potentially see some new fiscal framework for municipalities to offset some of these issues that you were just talked about in the opening statement? Yeah, we know that we're going to see a new funding framework. The local government fiscal or local government, the LGFF, um, local government fiscal framework that new formula is coming out both rma and alberta municipalities um put in a a proposal what that formula would look like the minister of municipal affairs uh, minister mckiver has stated that we will see that before the end of the year um they promised that nobody's going to be getting any less money for the first year and making sure that uh, we're able to plan and manage what we've got working in the future Um, What we're not going to see, I don't think, is the increase to the base funding that we were asking for. Um, The province had indicated it was going to be $722 million. Alberta municipalities um, voted very strongly at our last convention that we'd like to see that increase up to $1.75 billion. Uh, It's very unlikely that we're going to see that for 2024, but it's not something we're going to stop asking for recognizing that uh, our province and our municipalities are facing a $30 billion infrastructure deficit. And and we need that funding to make sure that we're making our communities attractive. Um, The province has an Alberta's Calling campaign going on where we want to increase and we want to grow. And that can't happen if we don't have the infrastructure to support that growth. One of the big other issues that I've been hearing a lot from mayors across the province is the housing uh, supply issue. Uh, you you just talked about the Alberta is calling campaign, and that is bringing people to our province, which means they need to be housed somewhere. And right now we are in a deficit of the housing uh, uh, supply. Uh, diversity of housing is a top priority for a lot of municipalities. Uh, you talk about the infrastructure going hand in hand with this increase in residents to the province. What happens if it doesn't happen? What happens if the province doesn't come to the table? Are these housing projects that the people who are coming here just not going to happen? And then we're going to have to start looking at other avenues to home these people? I think it just delays our growth. Um, I think there's a great initiative happening right now. Alberta has a lot to offer. 
And if we don't have that uh, infrastructure in place, if we're not able to build houses, if communities can't grow to uh, to accommodate all of those people moving into the province, it just slows that right down. Uh, if you're looking at housing from Ontario or BC, where you're a million dollars if you're anywhere in the GTA or or in in Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, um, it's significant significantly cheaper here even our our most expensive cities are probably half of what a, a house is selling for in in Toronto or in Vancouver so we're very attractive especially for those who uh, are looking maybe to slow down their pace of life um downsize and if we don't have the housing here to support that we're not going to see that growth why should the province take a why should the province make infrastructure funding a priority for municipalities in 2024 from your standpoint because you talk about the need which is understandable but uh, I, I talked to I've talked to you on the, my show I've talked to many of your colleagues on my show and they always say that there's only one taxpayer where's this right. money going to come from uh, is it just making it a priority or where is this money going to come from because you're asking for almost 1.1 billion dollar extra each year where is this money going to come from? Not each year, just the the base funding would be an extra billion dollars, not not a billion dollars every year for the foreseeable future. We're looking for a one time increase to that base funding model to put us more in line with what uh, MSI was going to be uh, since we started seeing cuts to that over the last decade. But it is a priority and there is only one taxpayer. Uh, municipalities only have um, one way to access that funding, and that's either through grants or or through um, property taxes. And so if we're not getting that support from the province, then it's coming from the tax base and it's coming from property taxes, homeowners and businesses who are investing in their communities. And that's the basis of what Alberta is as a province. If our communities aren't growing, our province isn't growing. And so if we're not seeing that funding, that infrastructure funding support coming from the province, then we can't grow as a as a province. At the end of November, uh, Alberta municipalities, along with yourself, held a, a virtual town hall for municipal mayors and councillors from across the province. Uh, in your opening statement, you said individually municipalities are struggling. Are these the words that you're hearing from mayors and councillors from across the province? And what is Alberta municipalities as an organization going to be looking at in 2024 to sort of make everyone feel like they're working together and not being left out in the cold by themselves anymore. Absolutely. Our advocacy efforts are 100% our member our member driven. Um, so we're struggling, like I said, with mental health and addictions, with justice, with policing, um, infrastructure deficits. We've got a ton of work that we need to be doing in our communities and we need to be continuing advocating on behalf of our members, on behalf of our municipalities, um, to make sure that they're as strong as they possibly can be. What else did you hear in that virtual town hall, if you don't mind me asking? I, I know I'm, I'm, I was I was told I, I, I have the opportunity to ask this question, but I want to know from you, because you heard from everyone who was on that call, I'm assuming. What were some of the priorities? Is it what you're talking about, or were there some more local regional issues that people were talking about as well? No, I think for the most part, it is that provincial support and funding for infrastructure. And definitely with justice, we've got a rising crime rate. I can speak to Wetaskiwin specifically, uh, where depending on how you place the population, we're Alberta's most dangerous city for anything 10,000 and over. And so we're a city of just under 13,000 people, and we don't have the resources to add the, the additional police. So for every RCMP member that we add, it's 1% to our tax base. And we're we're looking like we need... 14 or 15 more members to be able to address the criminal code calls for service that they're facing on that provincial average. Our crime severity index, our CSI is three and a half times the provincial average. And things like that can't happen just from a municipality. We need that advocacy from the province as well. And a big part of that is the mental health and addictions. We've got a large homeless population with Asquin. We would rival any big city in North America per capita with our homeless population. And that's just simply something the the municipality, the city of Wetaskiwin can't handle. And so when I talk to other municipalities who are struggling with this, and of course, it's the big cities in Alberta, Edmonton, Calgary, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, Red Deer, have all been facing these things for a long time. But when you start hearing it from Slave Lake and Edson, uh, Spruce Grove reached out to me a year and a half ago saying that they were having uh, an issue now where they'd never seen a problem with homelessness before in their community 
are now facing a problem with homelessness in their community. And so Edson's under 10,000 people, Slave Lake is as well. It's the smaller communities that are struggling with this. And a big part of that is the mental health and addictions. And if we don't have that support, we're never going to get any better. The, the problem is going to continue to rise and it's going to spread out throughout the province. And some of the smaller communities in the towns and villages who might have known the one or two people who couch surfed or or were homeless in their in their community are now going to see a growing number for that. And it's going to spread right throughout the province. It's not just going to be a big city problem. I, I know you're, you're, you just were elected president in September, but have you had conversations with the province already? I, I know you were vice president beforehand, so I'm assuming there was ongoing conversations already. But you as president, since you've taken over from President Kathy Heron, have you had conversations about this issue? Because mental health and addiction is a health file. Traditionally, it's a provincial jurisdiction. So are you been, have you been knocking on uh, Mr. LaGrange's door to say, can we have a conversation about this file to, to have a, sit, a serious conversation? conversation about this to help our municipalities? Not directly as the president of Alberta municipalities, but it's been an ongoing conversation as the mayor of the city of Otasquin and bring, making sure that the other municipalities who are struggling with this are also part of that conversation too. So definitely something we're going to be working on in 2024, um, both as president of Alberta municipalities and the mayor of the city of Otasquin. Oh, you 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 had a busy November, I can say that, because you had your virtual town hall. You were crossing the province, I'm assuming, talking to mayors and uh, just meeting with your new Alberta municipalities uh, board. But also you were in Ottawa for advocacy days. And at the end of 2023, municipalities do work with the federal government when they do hand out money to municipalities. What did you hear? What were those conversations like in Ottawa? Uh, and how are you bringing those to Alberta to make sure that the federal government, which uh, only has two seats in Alberta understands what municipalities in the province are dealing with right now? Not surprisingly, the conversation was was similar. We talked about infrastructure dollars coming from the federal government, a uh, little bit about climate change, a little bit about rural and northern communities, uh, mental health, uh, addictions, infrastructure for communities, and uh, what we're going to be doing with contract policing when that contract ends with the RCMP in 2032. Uh, so I had a chance to meet with five or six different MPs last week, and that was one of the conversations or one of the questions that I'd asked to is that if there is going to be a move from contract policing, that we are given lots of time, lots of notice to work on something like that. If we have to move to a provincial police service model, then we obviously need some time to work through that and what that looks like. And then we have to give the municipalities the opportunity to look at regional policing as well. You look at the cities and towns that surround both Edmonton and Calgary. Is there a possibility for them to partner up and have an EPS or a CPS service that also provides policing for St. Albert, um, Morinville, Leduc, Strathcona County, uh, and then in Calgary, if we're going out to Airdrie or Okotoks or any of the surrounding areas like that, uh, we, we're going to need some time to put that together. So if there's going to be a discussion on whether or not we're getting out of contract policing, uh, we definitely need to be at the table having that discussion. We've been a little bit frustrated with the contract negotiations with the RCMP cost us. Uh, it cost the province as a whole $60 million um, for each of the municipalities. And I think uh, the government of Alberta's portion of that was a little over $80 million. So we've got a vested interest in what policing looks like in our province. And it's important that we're at the table having those conversations um, and so we get to express or voice our voice, our opinions on what should be happening. Uh, did you get a sense that the federal government was willing to have you at the table instead of being forced upon you like the uh, retroactive pay that municipalities dealt with earlier this year? I hope so. There was, <laughs> there was no concrete. There was no concrete. Here's your invitation. This is when we're going to be talking about it. But making sure they knew that it was a priority for us is all we can do. We, we had the same conversation when they went through the contract starting in 2016 or 2017, asking to be a part of that conversation. Uh, when we did, we weren't a part of that. And then they're back in a contract negotiations um, for the contract that ended earlier this year. We still haven't had uh, any say in that. So I'm not holding my breath, but I did express how important it was that we are a part of those conversations.
Um, I want to turn to sort of the accomplishments of Alberta municipalities, because I know the state of municipalities is in flux. There are some challenges. But looking back on the last 12 years, are there things that you can point to and say, you know what, municipalities are doing it right? We do have our challenges, but we got, are doing things right. And what are those for you as the mayor, but also as president? I think some of the campaigns we ran, especially during the provincial election, um, think local and vote local, making sure that uh, those the important questions were asked in terms of what's important to your community and are you getting that candidate that is going to be representing you in the provincial government um, based on that, not based on uh, a, a political party. Um, we also were able to change the, the funding formula for um, provincial revenue from 50% up to 100% one-to-one. So for every dollar more that the province is going to bring in, that's going to help us with our LGFF. Um, we've had, sorry, it was Think Alberta Vote Local as it just popped back into me. We've been working with healthcare. Uh, former President Kathy Heron sat on a board to get through with some EMS changes. Um, those have been implemented. We've been talking about how healthcare hasn't been great in lots of the municipalities. And so now the province has announced that they're going to be changing that. So I feel like we've done a lot of work in terms of um, changes through the provincial government, through our advocacy efforts, and through resolu resolutions that our members are bringing forward uh, is really important work that we've been doing over the last 12 months. And I think as we struggle uh, individually and as a province, I think um, it's going to be more important now that our members are there they're loud and they make sure that we're hearing what they want and we're making sure that we do those advocacy efforts um, on their behalf. But as mayor now, let's turn to the city of Otaskawin for a second, if you don't mind. Well, looking back on the 12 months in the city, what are, what can, what things do you point to and say, you know what, we, we had a tough year, but we got this done. We got X done. We got Y done in our community because now our community is better off 10 years from now when people are looking back and saying, what did, what accomplished, did we get accomplished in 2023? I think my biggest or our sorry, I think our biggest accomplishment is uh, securing some funding from the province for a permanent homeless shelter. Like I had said earlier, we are we'd rival any big city in North America for our homeless population per capita. Uh, we've had about it'll be five winters coming up now of temporary emergency shelters in place. We were able to secure funding for a permanent build. We've seen the the plans. We've had it pass through council. Um, December 11th coming up on Monday is the final approval for that to go through. And I think that that's what's going to change uh, what Wetaskiwin looks like over the next 10, 15 years. It's been a pretty contentious issue. Um, we hear the safety concerns, and of course, that's extremely valid. We've had issues with panhandling or aggressive panhandling, public intoxication, and for the most part, haven't had the supports in place to accommodate or to deal with people struggling with mental health and addictions. And this is going to be uh, an extreme change for what we've got in the city of Tasman in terms of supports for our homeless population. And again, it's been a, an extremely contentious issue for us, for our community. Uh, and I think that what's important is that short term, it you haven't seen a whole lot of changes in the community because it, it's gonna take years for that to happen. It's taken us decades to get us into the spot we're at right now and dealing with the, the issues that we have, the social issues that we have. And it's going to take years for us to come out of it on the other end. But I think this is a great first step and a great partnership with the province um, showing their commitment um, to what a community needs to look like and how that support for mental health and addictions is going to make that change. Bill, I, I want to turn to the future now, and we are at the end of 2023, looking at 2024. What does municipalities look like in 2024 from a, a municipal standpoint? And then we're going to talk about the organization in two seconds. But from a municipal standpoint, what are municipalities looking to in 2024? Uh, what challenges and sort of obstacles and sort of hope do they have in 2024? I think... We spoke about the challenges earlier, and I think as they continue to work through that, having the the strength to move forward and and make some of the changes that I think 
we've just taken for granted for a long, long time. Levels of service need to be looked at in some of the communities that are facing high property tax increases, um, how we do things, whether or not uh, contracting services out is a viable option in terms of how we operate the city versus um, just because the city's always done X doesn't mean that they always have to do that. Uh, there might be better ways to operate and just having the, the the courage, I guess, to try something new when there are some efficiencies to be found. Um, and then continuing to work outside of their mandate. Municipalities have been working in the in the health, the mental health, the housing, all of these other issues that we continue to face, we've now been forced to to be a part of and be a part of the solution. And I think that if we're going to be put into that position, we need to be supported by the province and by the federal government when we're stepping outside of what we're mandated to do. We're creatures of the province. We're we're at the we're serving at the province's will. And so we can only do that with the support of the province. And I think forming that relationship and that partnership is going to be really important in 2024 and as we move forward. So is that a priority for you? If you had one priority to try to accomplish by the end of 2024, would it be a better working relationship with uh, the Alberta government and even the federal government? Yeah, I think so. I think we've got a decent relationship with the province and it needs to be improved for sure. Federal government, I don't think we've had um, a great relationship with in terms of municipalities. Having only two representatives um, from the Liberal Party in our province makes it really hard for any one municipality to form that relationship with an MP. Uh, I know that each of the other municipalities work hard at developing that relationship with their MP, but when they aren't the government of the day, it makes it really difficult to uh, to have any kind of say in maybe what the priorities are for our province. And there's always the the conception that Alberta is the the stepchild that often gets forgotten or forgotten. Sorry. So, I think uh, a way for us to form that and and continue to build on that both through the federal and provincial government is going to be really important. Relationships are really important to me, and that was one of the things that I wanted to for focus on uh, as president of Alberta Municipalities was building the relationships with all of our members. Uh, we hear quite often that. Towns and villages don't feel like they're supported. Mid cities don't feel like they're supported and the big cities don't feel like they're supported. So there's a disconnect somewhere that- I was gonna uh, say, you must be doing something them. right if everyone feels like they're <laughs> not feel, feeling supported. If, uh, if I could change that, if I felt like all of them felt supported, um, that would be a goal I think over the next two years to make sure that uh, we're doing our part, um, being there and while we can't, focus on every issue for every size of community in Alberta. We definitely need to be here for, for the greater good of all municipalities. And then we have the opportunity through our boards and committees to make sure that we're offering that support too. And that's just something that I wanna work on. And as a complete aside, and hoping that it's gonna be something that we that we focus on maybe a little bit more moving forward. Grand Prairie is hosting the Winter Games coming up in February, and there's a number of board members that are going to be traveling up to Grand Prairie to volunteer and, and work the games with the city of Grand Prairie. And so um, I think that that speaks to the commitment that our board has in terms of the support for uh, each of our municipalities. When something like that is going on, it's important that they feel supported uh, and get the help from, from other electeds across the province because we struggle with volunteers in each of our communities. And if we have the opportunity to go and show that we can support them, then maybe the next time there's a big event going on, it's not just the board from Alberta municipalities that's going, but it's going to be mayors and councillors from other communities that are stepping up and, and heading out of their communities to help someone else um, with the hopes that one day when they need some help, um, they're going to have it returned back to them and have mayors and councillors coming from other communities into their community and, and just making sure that things like that um, can operate and run as efficiently and effectively as they can. One of the big news stories that came out in 2023 was the city of Chestermere going through um, some growing pains. I, I'll put it that way. Um, the Minister of Municipal Affairs uh, earlier in December, as of recording this, came out and fired the mayor, three councillors, 
and three CAOs for the uh, city of Chestermere as president of Alberta municipalities. I'm assuming you're following this sort of uh, with a, 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 an eye on it at all times. Was, what was your initial reaction when Minister McIver announced the dismissal of the four councillors, the three councillors and one mayor in the city of Chestermere? I think like everybody else, especially with a vested interest in municipal politics, They've been following that story since the investigation started. Um, reports have been written up. Um, those have been released publicly. And I think this is a really good opportunity to see that municipal governments are held accountable. They're, they're, they're not able to just operate in their own little world without a having to answer to somebody. And I think this shows the commitment on the province's part to make sure that our residents are looked after as well, that if there are municipal councils, or municipalities that aren't operating within especially the MGA, um, that there are consequences for it. And I think that it shows um, the rest of the province that if there are some councils or some municipalities that might be operating in the gray, and I'm not saying that there are, um, that there is, uh, there, is a, there is a way to, to be held accountable. There is a way for investigations to be done. And I think that too often um, complaints are made, investigations are done, and you generally don't see consequences coming from something like that. And and I, I can't say whether or not it was the right decision. All I can say is that if we have an MGA that we need to follow, we've got a province that's going to oversee something like that. Um, that very real consequences can come from not doing your job. And it, it becomes difficult when you're, it's easy to say a mayor and three councillors were fired because there isn't, there aren't faces, there aren't names attached to that. But when I've been in it for, I've been uh, an elected for 10 years. And so I've met a, at least a few of the, the members that were affected by this at either convention or through mid city mayors. Uh, and it, it changes the dynamic when you've got a name and a face and somebody you've talked to before. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm empathetic to what's happened to the members that were fired for sure. Uh, and I'm empathetic to the government of Alberta and Minister McIver for, for having to get involved in something like that. And then to make those tough decisions because no matter who it is, it's still a, it's a tough decision. Um, so will Alberta municipalities the, be watching this as it unfolds because uh, CAO has been appointed and we are going to a by-election in 2024. We're not sure when that's going to be. So I'm assuming Alberta municipalities is going to be following along with this as it unfolds because this is unprecedented in this, uh, the province of Alberta. I have not, and I tried to do my research. I have not been able to find one case where this has happened. So I'm assuming Alberta municipalities is taking a keen interest in following this as it unfolds to sort of rectify some things that they might see as we can do some training on or potentially doing other things with, right? Yeah, and that was a conversation we had at the town hall too, is making sure that we're training newly electeds and even some of the people, not some of the people, anybody who's been elected or is elected, I think it's a great opportunity at, at least once every four years um, to revisit the MGA and revisit what your what your job is and what your role is in, as a municipal elected official. Um, and maybe some of those things could have been prevented if there was that opportunity. Um, and maybe there's the opportunity for... Uh, municipalities to reach out to Alberta municipalities and get that support and make sure that everybody is operating within that MGA and you don't have to get to a point where we are right now where four people, four electeds have lost their job and three administrators have lost their jobs. Uh, that's that's not a good situation no matter what it is. And you're right, I couldn't find any other, um, any history of of something like that happening before. So for sure, it's precedent setting, and I think it's going to cause some potential changes to how we operate and what it looks like when you become an elected official or after the election happens. Mayor Gandum, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me, taking a half hour of time and doing this conversation. It's always appreciative. We will probably chat more in 2024 when more things develop municipality-wise. So thank you so much. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Chris.
And that's all for our year in review episode for this 2023. We'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of those who have tuned in and watched. Your support means the world to us. Remember, our mission is to bring you the most important municipal stories from across Canada and around the world. And we can't do that without you. So please keep those stories coming. Share your municipal news, your concerns, and even your municipal triumphs with us. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter in our communities. And your voices are essential to that mission. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.